What's up, traders? Back with Dosh Trader Tutorials Part 2, The Montage. Let's get to it. All right, traders, let's jump straight into this. So this is what your standard montage is going to look like right when you bring it up for the very first time by going to Trade and then Montage right up here at the... Uh, main menu here. So this is what you're going to get when you bring it up. And the first thing you're going to notice up top is the title bar. So uh, you can't get rid of this uh, once you have everything set and you're not going to see this uh, just so you know. But um, this is where you'll see the name of the stock that you brought up as well as the current bid and ask. And you'll see uh, that just chilling on the title bar. That's kind of what that's there for. Just kind of to give you a brief summary of the stock that you, you know, typed into the montage which is right here so if you want to change this to apple you'll see that apple comes up it'll tell us the name of apple as well as the current inside and ask and since the market's closed you're going to see that it says absolutely nothing so pcl over here this means the previous close that is one number that is up at the current moment and a lot of this guys i'm going to be taking straight from their website so uh, this is something that you can find in their manual uh, just to let you know um, ahead of time so uh, this box right here will typically have the current low of day and high of day. So it's going to give you uh, what the current range of the stock is for that day. Last is what the current last price that traded. Uh, in this box, you're going to see um, how much the stock is either up or down in dollar amount as well as percentage amount. And it's going to be either red or green based on uh, how the stock is trading that day. Uh, next to that, you have the volume, which is going to be how much volume that it has traded on that specific day that you are currently taking part in. And then level one is going to show you, again, what this shows you up here in the title bar, the current bid and the current ask. And the last box here is VWAP. And there's something special about this box, which we're going to get to here in a second. And that is the VWAP. But the cool thing about this box is you can right click it and you can change this to any of these you can have vwap since the open of today you can which standard vwap just to let you guys know which is also volume weighted average price for anyone that doesn't know that it is saying that since the open is since 9 30 eastern time where vwap is currently going off of open which is at four o'clock eastern in the morning so just to give you a heads up on that total trades today dollar volume today imbalance data bid ask size, company name, open price. I mean, you have all of these. I personally put it on LULD. What that is, is it's going to tell you what the limit down, which is LD, and limit up price is. So if the current price is, say, $5, and the limit up price is $5.50, that way I will know, because you guys know if you follow me on the channel, that I like to trade volatility stocks, ones that are making an intense move to the upside. So it's good to know where that price is, um, because unless you have it on your level two, which you also know I don't use level two, you would not be able to see that otherwise. So if it gets to a, a certain price point and starts to just hit that level and not go through it, you can kind of tell that the halt is, is probably going to happen anyway. But if you have it on your chart, um, it's nice because on my charts, I have VWAP as a line as well as I can see the price of it at any given time. So I don't need that up here on the montage. And knowing the limit up and limit down is not something that I necessarily always need to know, but it's something that it's nice to have on the montage versus having VWAP on here that I already have on my charts anyway. So it's kind of a useless box if VWAP is up there. So again, this is one where you can change it to whatever you would like to have and if you have any questions about any of these specifically i'm not going to get into those during this but leave those down in the comment section below and i will be more than happy to answer so continuing on we know what the anchor is from the basics video this is where you're going to drag to link the montage to a chart so if you had a chart up right next to here uh, you could take this and see how it turns this you would just drag that onto a chart and it would link this montage to that chart so when you type in apple the apple chart would come up Underneath that is where you'll know if it is shortable or not. If it is shortable, you'll have an S here. If it is not shortable, nothing will come up. There will, it'll just be blank. And then the other one that I've seen is SSR, which means short sale restriction. That means a stock within either today or the previous day has went down 10% and has been put on short sale restriction. 
we can get into short sale restriction, but that's not really part of a montage video. So if, again, if you have questions about that, feel free to leave it down below and we can feel free to answer those there. Um, some other things that you'll see here is when it does get paused for a halt, you will see, a, I believe it's a P will pop up. Um, and then there will also be an R for resume. So I think it's P for pause, R for resume. I don't quote me on that, but I think those are just the only two other symbols that I've ever seen uh, pop up here. I'm pretty sure it's, it's either T or P. It's it's one of those for the for the trade resume and uh, the pause for the halt. Now up here where the Q currently is, I'm actually gonna scroll down because I don't know all of these offhand, but I do know that Q is for NASDAQ. This is basically just telling us which um, market designator has for uh, each particular ticker. So if we go from Apple to say Google, that's also NASDAQ. Um, I'm just going to start typing in some random stocks here. So like NEO is part of the NISI, which is uh, New York Stock Exchange. And you'll see, you know, some other things obviously change too, but um, that's what that letter there is for. And that pretty much takes care of the top part of the montage here. Um, this is your level two. Um, level two is something I don't use, but it doesn't mean that everyone doesn't use it. So we're going to go ahead and go over this as well. So over here on the level two, what you're going to see is one, you're going to see the route that it is taken, whether that's ARCA, NASDAQ, NISI, um, that's what's going to come in over here. And then right next to it is the bid, which is the price, right? So you got your bid and your ask. So uh, this is going to be the price and it's going to be in most likely different colors and we're going to get to that in a second as well and then next to that you're going to have the size and again we're going to get to that in a, because this is all customizable that's why I keep saying we're going to get to that in a second this is all very customizable you can change the colors you can change what you see you can change how much of what you see and uh yeah, actually, you know what? Let's just get right into it because there's really no reason to get around it. Um, but what I just did is I right clicked and I hit level two config and you're going to see it all pop up. So if we're looking at a normal level two, you're going to see all these different color groups. And what that is designed to do is say you have a huge bid on, and it starts stacking up. Well, you're going to have this huge amount of yellow, right? Because there's going to be a ton of bids from all the different uh, routes and they're going to be stacking up where on the ask, you might only have like one, which means, okay, we have a lot more bids at this price than we do on the ask at this price. So it might be showing you if you're reading level two, that it could be getting ready to go up because there's an imbalance on one side of the level two, if that makes sense. So again, that's something completely different, but I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what the colors are used for. Um, there, there's so many different things. This is something that I would highly recommend, just like the hotkeys that I've talked about in the past, um, that you go in and you just mess with all this. this. It's all personal preference. There's really no reason for me to kind of go over it. Um, you can really kind of, it's all self-explanatory. You just have to kind of go over it. Um, but there are a couple things in here that are a little bit more important, um, like the colors. If you want to change those, uh, you can change the... Um, the, uh, the books as well in here, like if you have access to multiple books, if you only want to see one book or whatnot, um, you can also put a grid on it. Uh, let's see if that actually works. No, it's not going to because there's nothing in there where instead of it just kind of being the colors, it'll actually put like black line grids on there. Um, so there, there's all kinds of different things that you can do um, within here. And again, it's all personal preference. So I highly recommend, again, going in and, you know, doing a couple things, seeing what it looks like. You can always revert back. Um, you can see there's a low default. Uh, you can set a default. Once you find something you think you like, and then you can change it. You can, again, it's very customizable. So moving down from the level two, I mean, that's really all there is to do that. Underneath the level two, you'll see, again, if you do have multiple books, this is where they would be. Um, I only pay for level one, so I don't have access to multiple different books. I'm just getting the simple level one data and that's what IEX is for that's all I need um, but if you had ARCA NASDAQ NISI if you had all of those extra books they would all be displayed here so if for some reason on the level two you only want to see orders from one book uh, you could easily click it down here instead of having to right click level two config come down here <clears throat> and change it to that book specifically so but yeah so down here, uh, we have the shares. So this is where you would be actually entering your order. Uh, so if we're on NEO and we want to put in 100 shares of NEO, um, a cool little feature is you can mouse wheel. 
uh, if you have this, uh, it comes default to 100 shares. I don't think you can actually change this. I think that's something I've asked DOS before, and I don't think it's possible. Um, I think it only goes in increments of 100. But your mouse wheel can be used for almost everything on the order screen. So um, now the display price is... Uh, if, if say you're putting in like a 10,000 share order, but you only want it to show on the level two as 100 shares, you can do that. You would put that right here. So you would put 10,000 here and you would put 100 here and it will show uh, whatever your price is. As you can see, I'm using the mouse wheel right here. But on Neo, I don't know what the current price is, but say at 50. So if we put an order in at 50, it'll look like there's only 100, but there's actually going to be 10,000 there. And this is part of why I don't use level two, but again, a whole different story. So let's say you're in the position of, we'll just, we'll go back down to a reasonable amount here out of a hundred shares and you're in this position. So obviously we'll have our accounts and positions windows open. So you'll know you're in this position, but if you hit this TMP button, what this is going to do is it's going to go back to what your default montage looks like before anything is set up. Now, when you do that, say we hit this P button and we had 100 shares, 100 shares would show up. So if you're ever in a moment where you're like looking to quickly see how many shares you have, you can always just click this P button if you're not exactly sure for some reason. Just hit the P and it'll show you exactly how many shares you have on that specific ticker on that montage. Um, let's see what else. This is a lock button. Uh, sometimes if I want to stick around for the remainder of a session, um, but I know I'm done trading at 11 o'clock, uh, I'll hit the lock button just so I don't get tempted. And uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's really all it does. You'll see it graze out the buttons that you would use to get in and out of a stock. It also locks down all your hot keys and buttons, um, or I think it's just your hot buttons. I don't know if it necessarily does your keys because that would only be this montage specifically. Um, so you would have to actually go and lock each montage. Um, this here is your routes. Uh, if you do need to use a stop route, um, you would come here to stop. And as you can see, there's the multitude of routes. Um, now, for each broker, this is going to be different because each broker is not going to offer you all these routes. And there, some are going to be different. Some are going to be... Um, there's probably going to be less for like something. I, actually, I know there's less for a place like CMEG. Uh, this is Interactive Brokers, so their smart route is a little. It looks a little different. Um, some places will just say limit and market. Um, they change theirs to say smart limit and smart market. Um, so again, it's going to be a little different. But this is technically just the limit and market, but it's through their thing. And you can see ARCA limit, ARCA market, NISI limit, NISI market. Um, NASDAQ's on here as well, NASDAQ limit, NASDAQ market. So that's what the L and the M is on the end of each of these four for each route. Um, I, I don't know what this preference means. Um, let's see, it just says preference. Let me see if this actually says anything about it. Can learn a little bit here together. This field is located to the right of the route drop down box. Type in the market maker or ECN you prefer. Okay, so that's if you have a preference for a market maker or ECN that you prefer, you can put that in that box. That's something I've never used before, so I've, uh, I've never bothered using it. Uh, the day, um, this is for uh, the certain day. So if you're if you're a swing trader, you might use like good to close, which is GTC. Um, because that would mean if you put an order in, it'll just stay there until you either close it or it gets filled. Day plus is for pre-market and after hours. Uh, if you're trading intraday, so day plus 4 a.m. Eastern to 9.30 Eastern, and then 4 p.m. Eastern to 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And then day, you would use this, would be from 9.30 Eastern a.m. until 4 o'clock, the closing bell, p.m. Eastern. So... Uh, those are really the only two that I use. Um, all of these others, obviously, you can use them for other things. But, um, yeah, uh, you can also set orders so that, like, at the open, at the close. Um, honestly, I'm not sure what this FOK means. Let me see. FOK stands for fill or kill, which requires that the order be filled immediately in its entirety or canceled. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, basically, that's a market order. And either it gets filled or it gets killed. So it, that's pretty interesting. Um, IOC, I do know this one I th is pretty much the same thing. I knew it was immediate or cancel. I didn't know that it was, it really kind of was, it's kind of the same thing as the FOK. I thought, let's see what it actually says. Where any part of the order that can be filled immediately will be filled while the remaining shares will be canceled. So, I mean, that sounds to be the same exact thing to me, but, um, or wait, the order... 
So maybe, okay, so IOC would give you partial fills, where FOK would either give you the full fill or no fill. Okay, that makes more sense. So that's why they're two separate things. Um, moving on, uh, this is um, the any, let's see, I want to make sure I get this right because sometimes I've mistakenly said the wrong thing. So this box is the TIFF box. Um, I've always been told to just use any, and I've never really looked into why, uh, but it says, stands for, AON stands for all or none, and N hold stands for not hold. Please select any if you are unsure if, of your desired route supports AON or N hold orders. So there you go. That's why I've always been told to use any, um, which makes sense. Uh, it's kind of playing off of the IOC and the FOK as well for the AON uh, means all or none. And yeah, so just, just stick it on any and be done with it. Um, this is your accounts um, drop down. You can see my trading demo account in here as well as my real account. Um, let's see, uh, got your short button, your cancel button, your replace button, and your buy button. Um, I'm, I don't know what these NR and PO stand for. Let me see if I can, uh, figure that out real quick. Um, they don't even have it on here, it looks like. So I think we're just going to skip that. I've never seen those used or anything. So, uh, maybe I'll look that up and maybe get back to you guys. Um, the only other thing uh, is, again, if you guys right-click in here, I showed you guys this in the basics one. Um, if you right-click anywhere in an open area on the montage, and you can change the different things. You can change the route config. Um, if you have a preferred route, uh, you can change uh, the actual order template. So what this means is if you click on this and go to default, you can actually change this to whatever you want. Any single, every time you pull up a new ticker, Whatever you have as the local default here will actually be what pops up. And I love leaving my shares on zero for this. And the only thing I usually put in here is I put this on any. I put this on day because I don't trade pre-market or after hours. And if I want to, I can always just manually change it. Sorry, I had to, uh, I realized that it actually put my account number in there. So I'm going to have to edit that out. <laughs> but so that last part, it'll put your account number in there. You hit this apply to all exchanges and it will actually set that for your default for every single time you pull up the montage and move forward with whatever you're doing. And that way I always keep it on zero uh, with the shares so that that way um, there's no mistakes by accidentally clicking buttons or whatnot. I have to physically put the shares in there th you know, manually through hot button, whatever it may be. I can't just make a one click mistake if I don't have anything popping up to begin with. Um, if we right click and go, all right, so I realized that my account number is also in the trading settings, uh, right when you pop it up, there's no way to hide it. I could blur it out, but uh, just, it, again, you can go in there. Trading settings is just a place where you can really dive in and kind of go back and forth, but it really doesn't have anything to do with the montage anyway. So again, right click style. Um, this is set to default. I put mine on stop order because at that time, if I ever want to set a stop, it's just ready to go. Um, you don't use these if you don't want to, but when you click on stop, um, if you don't have this up and you go to put a stop in, it's going to give you a pop-up window and then you're going to have to fill all this stuff out in the pop-up window and then hit okay. And to me, that's just an inconvenience when you can just make the montage a little bit bigger and, or take up a little less level or take up a little more level two area, whatever it may be, um, to just have this on here. So if you want to set a stop at any given time, it's already up here and ready to go. And speaking of stops, uh, you have, I always use markets for my stops, um, because, Obviously, if it's a stop, you want to make sure you're getting out of the stock. Um, I I have used uh, trailing orders as well and range orders. A trailer, a trailing, uh, as you can see right here, is the word trail. Uh, if you click that one, what it's going to do is you're going to put in a cent amount or a dollar amount. So if you want a 50 cent trail, you would literally just type in 0.5 for 50 and hit you know, whether it's sell or buy, and it's going to put it 50 cents. So say we're in a stock and we're long at five dollars the price is up at 550 and i put in a 50 cent trail it's going to immediately put off the current last price it's going to put my stop so it would put it at five dollars and then if the price goes up to say 560 my trail would go up to 510 if it goes up to six dollars my trail would be at 550 and then so your stop just kind of moves along with it in that 50 cent anchor 
increment. Um, the range order, this one is you put you hit range and then you get to manually choose where your stop is on the low side if you wanted to stop out of the long position. And you would also get to put the high range in where you would want to take profit. So if you if you enter a position and you're looking to do a one to one, uh, you could do that uh, right here um, and be done with it. And then obviously the market and limit limit, you get to put in the order that you want to get stopped out at. And just keep in mind, if you use a limit order, it could blow through that and not fill you. And that's why I always use a market order for stops, because that way you're going to get filled, even though you might get some slippage, you're not going to get stuck in a stock. Because if you put a stop at a certain price, you're putting it there for a reason. If you don't get filled there, uh, you know, things can deviate away from your plans and we don't want that right stick to your plan stick to your edge and always remember it's just one trade my one little piece of advice uh in a non-advice video <laughs> uh and then the last one is the layout config so if you right click go to layout config this is where if you want to add the old trusty hot buttons that i use uh, this is where you would do it you can remove or add uh, these four things from the montage you got level one level two uh, the trade area and then your hot buttons you can also if for some reason you want to keep the title bar but not show the company name in the title bar this is where you would take that off uh, if you want to move things up and down um, you can do that as well um, but if we add the hot buttons you'll see that's actually pretty cool. Um, apparently, they have a default now uh, where when you add the hot buttons, it used to just be blank. Uh, so this must be in a uh, recent update that they put out where it actually gives you six hot buttons um, by default. So learning something new myself. And uh, yeah, so you could write, since it says buy X shares, uh, if you right click and hit edit, you'll see that it is saying, okay, so it's basically letting you choose the share size. Um, we can get into, you know, reading the code and making hotkeys and buttons a little bit later, but uh, in the tutorials. But for this one, basically it's saying uh, you put in your share size, so we're going to clear everything. And then let's say we want to buy 300 shares and we could hit this button. And it would actually, let me see if it says load and send. Yep, it says send. So when we hit this button, uh, all we had to do is input our share size. And then when we hit buy, what it's going to do, I actually just read this one off for you. So it's going to give us the smart limit route. It's going to give us the ask plus 10 cents, which means it's going to try to fill us on what the current ask is. But if the price is moving really fast, it's going to fill us up to 10 cents above what the current ask price is. It's day plus. So right now it's actually set for pre-market and uh, post-market. And then buy equals send just means it's going to load and send it. Now, if you're ever testing hot buttons, I recommend starting with this being load. You just literally would get rid of send and type in load. And you could actually try to hit these and you'll see that it'll put everything else in. So you can actually see it gave us the point 10 here um, because that's what it's telling you. It's giving it the 10 cent buffer, but there's no price in here. So since it's zero, it's just giving us 10 cents because that's the buffer it's given us. Um, but yeah, I would always recommend using load just to make sure it works. Also use a demo account if you have it available so that you can, you know, just make sure that hot buttons and hotkeys are working correctly before you ever use them for real. So, and just to look at one more, uh, the sell 50%. So if you are long and say it's moving in your favor and you want to sell, you see smart limit, uh, the price is now bid minus 10 cents. So it's saying uh, we want to make sure we actually get filled. So we're going to hit the bid with this sell. The shares that it wants to sell is your position times 0.5. So that's where the 50% comes from. The TIFF is day plus. So it's still set for the pre-market and post-market. And then it is set to send. So when you're in the position of 300, at any point in time, uh, you hit the sell 50% button. It's going to take 150 shares on the bid. And there you go. So that's the advantage of having uh, pretty cool hot buttons. You don't have to go 150. You have to, you know, put the price down below the bid, which is really all you have to do, and then hit sell. Um, but if you just want one button to do all that for you, uh, this is how you would get to that on the montage. And it's pretty cool. It is really cool that they put these in here. Um, it's something that a lot of people like to use, and now that they actually give you some, um, and who knows, maybe they... Uh, they saw some other people on YouTube and whatnot using these and, uh, you know, figured why not just put some in there? Because it used to be <laughs> it was just one blank button and you had to kind of figure this all out on your own. So I wonder if they actually made it. So and if again, if you want to edit these buttons, you right click and hit edit. If you want to add a button, uh, you just 
hit add button next to them and you can put them in the same row. I'm actually just curious if it puts it next to it. I wanna see if you add a row, let's see if it still puts it at the bottom. Okay, it does. So this is exactly what it would come up looking like. Um, just to, let's do this real quick, delete, delete row. So when you first did it, this is what popped up and you kind of had to do everything else um, by yourself. But if you add a row, you can put as many buttons in there as you want. If you really want to put like 15 buttons, you can. Uh, you're not really going to be able to tell what they are unless you really make these a lot bigger, um, which you can. You can right click if you hit edit where it says button height, you can change this, but it's going to change it for every single button. There's no way to do it for individual buttons, um, at least not yet. That would be pretty cool if you can make some buttons bigger than others, but as of right now, that's not available. And I think that's about it for the montage. Um, it's a pretty lengthy video, but I really think the montage is one of the more important things to go over. I don't necessarily think I missed anything. Um, if I did or you have any questions about anything that I may have missed, feel free to leave those questions down below. I will be more than happy to answer them. And again, um, some of the information I got was straight from the Dostrader user manual. You saw me looking down at it, not afraid to hide it. And again, I learned a few things um, as we were going as well. Um, there's a lot of things that I don't use. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that I got the correct definitions for everything, just in case you are someone who wants to use something along those lines. So again, all I got, like and subscribe, guys, if you haven't already. I always appreciate that support. Part two down. Next one, we're going to do charts. Part three is going to be charts. We're going to look forward to that two weeks from now. Again, I'm going to try to do these every other weekend, give myself time to make sure I kind of prepare and mentally get ready to do these because again these tutorials are something that we need to take seriously and make sure that we you know know the tools of our craft right because at any given time you might get put in a certain situation and you need to know how to get out of it so knowing how everything works is very key and i just hope that you're never in those situations but i know i've been there several times going like what the heck's going on and had to figure out a way out of it and it's always good to know exactly what's going on so and if you ever want to hear stories about uh, a pretty good one uh find the discord link down in the description below come in and ask me and i'll be <laughs> sure to tell you about my uh trade that i got stuck in on a half day i believe it was labor day and uh yeah that was fun so with that said i'm gonna get out of here and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one Peace.